In our project to undertake a historical reconstruction on the Kavai Hall organ in Manchester Town Hall, one of the challenges that we have to overcome is the pneumatic action for the solo division. Kavai Hall built the organ in 1877 and it was mechanical action throughout with Barker machines to each of the three manuals. In 1893, some 16 years later, Kavai Hall returned to enlarge the organ, adding a rank on the pedals and a whole new solo division. But the challenge that he faced then was that there was no room to add extra tracker action. So those 1893 additions were put on uh, pneumatic action, something Kavai Hall did very rarely. When the organ was later rebuilt by Lewis in 1913, all those actions, including the Barker machines, were replaced by a new Lewis pneumatic action. Our task is to recreate the 1893 Kibai Hall condition. That's relatively straightforward for the pedal pneumatic additions because we can copy a surviving uh, pneumatic action from a Kibai Hall pedal chest, but we have come up against a brick wall trying to find an example of a Kibai Hall pneumatic action on a manual soundboard. And after many inquiries across France and uh, other European organ builders, it does seem that not a single example survives of pneumatic action built by Kibai Hall for a manual soundboard. So, um, we're not starting from a completely blank sheet of paper. There are some clues that we found um, amongst the, uh, the, the solo soundboard of, uh, in the organ. And uh, one of our team here, David Roskelly, has been tasked with uh, developing a, a new pneumatic action that, to the best of our uh, knowledge, fits within all the different parameters and clues that we've found and yet works well. And uh, David's going to talk a bit more now about how we got to that and how it works. The, um, well, yeah, the solo soundboard, this is the bottom board of the solo soundboard. When we dismantled the organ, um, the Lewis action was on here. Lewis had covered this whole bottom board with uh, thick black cartridge paper and then glued all the motors for his under action on here. Because the motor, motors were very narrow, uh, they'd split the um, pallets to make the pluck lighter and they'd bored extra holes in the bottom board to make room for the, the workings of their action. Um, having removed all that Lewis addition, we found, as you can see, the shadows of Kavaya Cole's motors left on the original Kavaya Cole cartridge paper lining the bottom board. And if you were to count these, you'd notice that there's only 31 motor shadows, and every second note is here, and every other note is raised up above. So the motors are on two levels, so we discovered that. We discovered various other clues in the details of this, um, and based on that and sort of general knowledge of pneumatic underactions, um, we built this um, prototype to check that our new design that we're going to use at Manchester will work. Um, as you can possibly see, we've got motors on two layers inside, and the general principle is standard standard working for a pneumatic underaction. The charge, the air charge from the touch box down by the keyboard comes in through here, through a tube, which you can see we've got a plastic tube playing that role today, inflates this little diaphragm and lifting this primary valve. That then allows the air from this small Roosevelt motor to exhaust out under this valve out to atmosphere. And when the note's released, this collapses and the air from this pressurised chamber comes in and refills the Roosevelt. The Roosevelt then operates a similar valve, which isn't actually here at the moment, in this chamber, does exactly the same thing, and eventually the air path going up through here to the power motor under the pallet will exhaust that when the note is on and refill it with pressurised air when the note's released. And I will demonstrate. We've got a nice long piece of plastic tubing, six odd metres, and Hopefully. It seems to repeat fairly well and should 
give us the action we require.